Welcome to Yippie Kaye Classic. We're going to do a deep dive on a movie today, but before we get started, we have a small announcement to make. Um, we're going to lose a, a couple of our peeps. I heard um, Wojo and Brad are going to take a, a little sabbatical, a, a little sabbatical yeah. from the old podcast. So the one of the original mother podcasters is going to take a break. What's going on, guys? Well, I'm taking a class this um, this semester. And besides that and all my work and taking drum lessons, um, I'm exhausted. So, so we talked about it. He starts a new project at work in September. Um, well, it's already going on, but it's getting, it's kicking up in September. So it's, oh, you uh, started? Well, well, we've been working on okay. it for the whole year. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> you guys yeah. talk to each other at home? <laughs> so, occasionally sometimes <laughs> we're an opposite hey, man, too busy so well i'm bummed out because that's two less likes we're gonna get oh no that's right you guys don't do that so. <laughs> <laughs> well well uh well maybe you'll watch it now thing. now that you're not I mean, on it maybe you'll nice watch to it get this send off like i gotta <laughs> tell you maybe you'll get two new likes because yeah, who's gonna yell at ralph? ralph oh that would be john well don't worry well joe there'll be a beautiful montage when this one airs of Wojo, oh Wojo faces oh so. <laughs> you know, keep it up. Best of Wojo and Brad. Wojo. I got nice. the best of. I like so, that. We'll I wasn't play, sure we'll I wanted to do that. Music. Yeah, I don't because it's, you know, you guys are obviously the square is always open. You come back whenever you want. But, you know, It'll if I put fun. that at the end, it's going to seem a little permanent. But I think you deserve a Wojo uh, montage. It's a so, sabbatical. And we'll throw all. some it's Brad in there as well. Yeah. You know, um, Wojo, I don't know what kind of movies to pick. You may not realize this, but all of my choices since you've been on the podcast I've revolved around the f picking films that I think you're not going to like. Because <laughs> I like it when you don't like films. I believe that. I, I, I just see that. I can totally to the see place. That. You know what I mean? Yeah. What? What, Debbie? Bring a little Spitfire grill to the place. Oh. <laughs> Every film I bring is the Spitfire God, I can't wait for that sequel. It'll always be nice. <laughs> I mean, I know how to offend you. What kind of movie am I going to have to bring in to offend Ralph? <laughs> You know what I mean? I if think you're selling yourself short. I think you offend a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> it's only because I've been practicing with words. Yeah. Well, start making it make it black and white. That'll be you know, that'll be a step in the right direction. But uh, oh, to annoy you, yeah, to annoy me, yeah, yeah, because yeah. I think or it, a happy I guess, movie. I guess that's the purpose. Yeah, no happiness. Yeah, yeah. can't no, stand no, happiness. No. Oh, yeah. Not a great musical either. Yeah, yeah. 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 gotta have I'll miss us. Yeah, and we're gonna miss uh, yeah. them. But I know oh, you'll be listen, back. Of course. Yeah, we'll miss you. Uh, good luck with everything. I hope yeah. the drumming goes well so you can teach me. And let us know what you think of the and show it, now that you'll watch it. Yeah, please watch it a couple of times. Yeah, because <laughs> sure. you're not Brad, actually, you're not Brad, living. Brad, I'm you're talking to you, Brad. Now, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, good luck. And again, the seat's yeah. always open. So, uh, you know, good. welcome aboard. We welcome aboard. Welcome, welcome really pissed Ralph Welcome back. When we're not there. There's never a dry seat in the house. <laughs> okay let's just roll right over that one <laughs> uh all right so we're going to do a classic we chris brought a, a film to the table which we'll talk about but before we do that uh let's talk about what we watch and well joe and brad since you're since this is your day let's start with you guys uh we started watching dr death because of some people on here talking about it the yeah. the um fictional version wow is that amazing yeah um, we're, we're really enjoying it. I mean, as much as you can enjoy, you know, we're <laughs> yeah, not enjoying exactly. the fact that yeah. he kept Physical getting pain, hired. But it's, inept, yeah. Terrible doctor. And then yeah. we're balancing that with Veep. And, and she is just quite a contrast. Her, her character. Yeah, but she's a pretty horrible she person. She is too. so horrible <laughs> toward the end. I mean, yeah. she's such a good actress by her character. Oh my gosh. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, enjoying enjoying the Doctor Death, mm -hmm. and you know it reminds me of um, I can't remember who the there. Do you guys remember? Um, there was a nurse years ago, like a number of years ago, who wound up killing like forty some people, like going from hospital to hospital, getting hired, like a similar kind mm -hmm. of thing, and it just fascinates me. It's one of the reasons why I I like true crime and and that kind of stuff. Not that I'm glad it happened, but what makes these people tick and and seeing the guy whose name i can't remember who's not james vanderbeek from Dawson's Joshua Creek. Jackson. Joshua, yeah, that's Joshua. It. he was excellent um, 
He was really he excellent. Was yeah. Really he was, yeah. good. And he's good at playing, <laughs> you know, this guy who just creepy and 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 completely like as narcissistic as you can get. I mean, from from the beginning, no matter yeah. what. Well, if you and see the this, real guy. And well, you got to watch the documentary after you watch the, the real the, guy. Yeah. Of course, we're Fictional seeing the real thing. guy after all this stuff happened. And yeah. he's all it's, he's bloated and he's been through all hell. He looks creepy as hell. Yeah. Yeah. And so I don't know how he got away with what he got away with. But again, that's before all the shit. And the patients there. loved him. The patients right. loved yeah. him. Try, uh, my thing about Dr. Death is try reading a website now. Doctor reviews when you're going to get an appointment right. or something and, <laughs> and not look at it and go, uh, no Maybe kidding. not. I'm not sure about this. <laughs> so, yeah, a lot of that's, well, that's, a, that's a scary a, part. Yeah. Well, they're you doing know, a they doctor death. Got... The uh, podcast are doing a doctor death, too. And I don't know what that's about. I don't know what the next. Did he kill people is. in the prison? I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I bet he was very popular in prison because there's only people left. <laughs> I, bet he, I bet he was. I didn't mean that way. Oh, what but did the you one mean? time? Hey. The one time Sean didn't mean that. <laughs> that was a and tribute to Rogers yeah, to your last while. show. Sean is not very sweet, it. Sean. That was nice. Very nice to send them off like that. Uh, John, what about you? What did you watch? Uh, well, I'll bring up something I watched a couple of weeks ago that I, I haven't talked about. But for the first time, I saw um, the Friends of Eddie Coyle in oh. Chinatown. Yeah, wow. I had seen bits and pieces of Chinatown and never saw the whole both thing. Classics. I love yeah. both the movies. Uh, the Friends of Eddie Coyle, uh, Robert Mitchum, he was such a sad sack in that movie. And it ended so differently than I had anticipated. Like, I thought he was going to outsmart everybody. And the way it ended was just so... It was just gritty. Yeah. I mean, what year no was that one made? 1971? Uh, uh, yeah, it was. <laughs> but I go. did watch it for you, Ralph. Oh but Chinatown... Uh, <laughs> I love Chinatown because it was uh, Jack Nicholson's really breakthrough role. I mean, that really led to a lot of other stuff. And he was so good. And Faye Dunaway was good. John Houston was great in it. Uh, but I, I, like I said, I only saw bits and pieces. Now seeing the whole thing, I, I really enjoyed both those movies. And they couldn't be any more different either. Uh, but recommend them if you haven't seen them. I tell you what, you don't want to see the sequel to Chinatown. Yeah. Oh, Jakes. no. The Two Jakes. Is that what it's called? Yeah. 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 No, this was. Well, Robert Town wrote it, right? Yeah. Um, a bit better because he wrote it, you know. Yeah, it was excellent. I think he directed or, or wanted to direct it. I think Nicholson ended up directing He did. I he think did he end up directing it. There's a, there's a good documentary on Chinatown, I think, on Netflix or something. Oh, I'll, I'll watch that. It. I didn't know that. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. It explains a lot of stuff. So Anyway, that was, a, that was quick, quick and easy. Yeah. Uh, yeah there's Chris. actually a... Go, oh, go I was just going to say on the subject of Chinatown, which is one of my favorites, um, there's a great book called... Um, I think it's called either... The, the, the Big Goodbye or the Long Goodbye by a guy named Sam Lawson. And um, it's about the making of Chinatown. Uh, it's a great book. Um, it's so good. In fact, they're making a movie about the making of Chinatown. So, <laughs> oh, my God. So, oh, really? The yeah. making of yeah. the making of. What Basically, awesome. yeah. They're, yeah. It's one of those Hollywood sure films. The making so. of the making mm -hmm. of this. <laughs> I'll check it exactly. out. If you, if, you are, if you get the right name of it, let me know. I, I, yeah, I, love, sure. to, I love reading that behind the scenes stuff. Yeah, oh. it's really, it's really great. Um, and uh, as far as what I watched was like, I, I went back and I watched, I rewatched uh, David Mamet's first film, Homicide, uh, with uh, Joe Montaigne. Mm -hmm. and, as, it's, and it was funny because I remember seeing it the first time I watched it uh, many years ago, um, not, not, uh, not getting it, or it was very hard watch for me. Um, and I think it was partially just because of the way David Mamet writes and directs his actors. It's a very, you know, the very first time you, you you see a David Mamet film, one that he directs. I think most people are off put uh, by kind of the minimalism and they just well, not unlike the one you brought tonight. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure some people will be. I'm just um, saying, just the mannerism and you know when you yeah, see that when you mm -hmm. see that person's type film, you know it's like a Wes Anderson thing. You know right away a Mamet film. You know yep. right away what's going on. In yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's 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 very much the the word is on the 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 story and the words are the words. You know. Yeah. Just can, you know, you don't have to convey too much else. Um, that being said, uh, one of the things I noticed like right away was all the form stone in the background. I was like, is that Baltimore? And sure enough, it was shot here yeah. in Baltimore. I say oh, here wow. because I live just outside of Baltimore. Um, but yeah, really a, a great picture. I saw it uh, years and years ago, like back in the mid nineties, probably on video. And uh, I've been a huge mammoth fan ever since. Uh, one of the possible movies for tonight. I don't know if anyone's ever seen the, the David Mamet film uh, Spartan with Val Kilmer. I so good. But that is uh, so fantastic. Yeah. Um, 
anyway, that being said, check uh, out our Spanish prisoner drop that we oh, did. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, we did the Spanish prison. Wojo's first film. I think it was one of Wojo's game. first. Uh, Keeping the Wojo great. theme going. Look at that. It's like a yeah. vicious circle. Yeah. Vicious circle. Wow. <laughs> I love it. If you have, have you seen House of Games? Ever get a chance oh, to see yeah. that one? No. no. Check out House of Games. One. House of Games is excellent. And the one with Steve, oh, Spanish Prisoner is the Steve Martin one, which is just fantastic. Who's that? Yeah. Lindsey Krauss? Is that who's in that? Yeah, he was married to Mammoth. She's she was? A lot of her stuff. Yeah. But um. Yeah, before Rebecca Pizzo. The thing I like about Homicide other than the fact that it's shot in Baltimore, is the fact that it was very unsentimental in a way. Like most films, when people explore either their religious or mm -hmm. ethnic roots, they're rewarded for it. But the Joe Montagna character, the more he delves into like his roots, you know, in the Jewish community, um, the more he becomes susceptible to um, more and more problems. You know, sure. it's he it, to me, it's, it's a fascinating turn that like no one else was doing at the time, you know, because people yeah, really yeah. takes a, take advantage of his character in the film. Yeah, they, you know, they take advantage of, his of like his, mm -hmm, his yeah. self guilt and his uh, some might say self hatred. Yeah, they, uh, they really yeah. kind of he gets manipulated quite quickly. In fact, that's probably one of the things I was like, wow, that that happened really fast. But um, but other than that, it's a great picture. I totally recommend it. Yeah, Criterion Collection has a, a great release of that movie. It looks oh, really? great, and it's uh, got a lot of great extras. I remember I saw that movie uh, for the first time, actually, with my friend when I was in Israel, and we watched this movie about Jewish people in Baltimore and how awful the city looked, and he turned to me after the movie. He goes, so that's where you live, huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I said, not, not those parts. <laughs> I, said, good I would... Yeah, I would totally be down with blowing up Nazis, but that's not something that I have done. So I really, I think, I think that's a great. Film. But if given the opportunity, choice. yeah, of course. Yeah. Well, yeah, and you know, it, it was the confusing <laughs> thing is that homicide right. uh, series that was on about Baltimore, right? That was Life on the Street too. Life on the Street. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Came out yeah. So when Stillman stuff. directed an episode of that, yes, he, he did. did. Yeah. Really? yeah. Of of Homicide, Life on the Street. Yeah. 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 Interesting. I the wish I could have found it. I would have gone down and seen it. Yeah. yeah, I saw that when I was going to go <laughs> yeah. uh, Drew, what did you watch? A uh, couple of things. Oh, wait, wait, wait. wait. <laughs> Which, I mean, list everything you watched. I'm only going to talk about one thing tonight. Ooh. Uh, every once in a while, uh, a movie comes along and you go, this is going to be so much fun because it's going to combine a bunch of genres in the right way. And it's going to be really exciting. And the buzz is really good. And then you see the movie and it makes <laughs> all the wrong choices. And it takes what could be good ideas. So I'm putting the call out. If anybody wants to buy the rights to the multilingual German film, Blood Red Sky and remake it uh, with a much better <laughs> script, you should do it because it's basically Die Hard on an airplane. But the hijackers don't realize that one of the passengers is actually a vampire. Like that should be awesome. That should be awesome. And the very first scene of the movie is actually quite suspenseful, maybe betrays a bigger budget than they had. And that's a dangerous thing to flash forward like that because you really have to, you have to pay it off and you have to build the tension. But what they did was they did a, a tense flash forward and then they basically spent, it's a two hour movie for some fucking reason. They basically spent the next hour making things happen that should be suspenseful but then they're like no 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 we need a flashback that is completely <laughs> worthless and also uh, will bring the movie to a halt and i was really disappointed that that's what not only came out but was jumping the netflix charts because a die hard on a, i mean there's a lot of good die hard on a movies mm -hmm. a die hard on an airplane movies there's a bunch of good ones this should have been a lot of fun and there are parts of it that you go this there's something here. Unfortunately, the people who made the movie didn't make that. So it's funny. I, I just saw a review of that and they loved it. Is it a female and, vampire that's on the planet? Yes, yes. Yes. It's a mom with her. She's trying to fight her hunger. That's the whole premise is that she's flying. A woman with a mysterious illness is forced into action. Right. Right. She wants to, <laughs> what a great that's line. Yeah, I mean, that's not a twist. I mean, your review makes me not want to watch it. The review I saw was like, "Ooh, that sounds good. Well, I got 6.1 average stars. Yes. Yeah, so well, it's funny because great. I can't remember who exactly who reviewed it for Roger Ebert's website, 
but he basically i mean i watched the movie and then i read his review and i was like oh he's in he's in my brain about all the missed opportunity he even said i hope that they remake this foreign film all that kind of stuff and then the <laughs> comments were just so violent and and pro film and anti-critic and i was like even if you think it's good it's i mean it's not that fucking good so i think uh there's a lot better hijacking movies like executive decision and there are a lot better vampire movies which we've talked about on this show so uh blood red sky don't watch it you're welcome yeah and one of our one of our, <laughs> one of our categories is we never spun it which is die hard on a blank i mean that we, we could go on forever with that <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, all right uh sean Sean, you're uh, muted. There you go. Oh, OK. I'm hungry for Die Hard on a bagel. <laughs> OK. Well, uh, uh, okay. Everything bagel. That's a joke, right? Because right? I know I, I always have explained jokes, but that's <laughs> about, it's about rape. It's about rape. OK. <laughs> All right, Sean, Sean and Debbie, what do you guys watch? I'm going to miss well, this we for a few months. About- <laughs> <laughs> well, we you can watch it about Dr. Death, but Wojo did because we finished it. But Wojo did such a good job. But now, let um, me ask you guys a question. Did you listen to the podcast? No, just watch. You should check out the podcast, too. Well, a friend of ours was getting a major operation, so we just had to put Dr. Death aside for our own. Yeah, that's yeah. smart. Yeah, yeah I would do that, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, believe me, we didn't discuss it with her. But um, yeah, here's something you should really check out in the next couple of days. Right? <laughs> <laughs> so what we're going to say we watched it was um, oh, you're preparing for your surgery. Yeah. Runaway Train. Ah, oh, you know, nice. Eric Roberts, Eric yeah. Roberts, John Voight, my John man Voight. who's mm-hmm. written in like three of my movies. Uh, and I, 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 I had to pick this movie up because it's not streaming anywhere. And I was thinking about making it my next choice here. And um, I'm also trying to maneuver Eric Roberts into appearing on this podcast. Eric, are you listening? Because I have tweeted. No, I'm not. I have tweeted <laughs> that, um, to Eric that. um that I'd like to have him on to discuss Runaway Train, which he happily retweeted. Nice. Oh, really? Oh. Well, let him know that I have it on Laserdisc. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> well, if that doesn't get him on, nothing will. And I actually <laughs> bought one for you, Sean. I have a copy for you because I know how much you love this film. But Yeah, you, so um, I really do play. love this film. What I was waiting for was, um, you know, I think some people may think the acting's a little over the top, needlessly violent, needlessly crude. But um, I was waiting to hear what Debbie's reaction. Debbie, did you like the movie? I love the film. I really love the way um, Eric Roberts, you know, portrayed a prisoner, a hardened criminal. And he was just so sweet in it. You yeah. know, his, his this was movie. early Eric Roberts, too, right? This wasn't far this down. This was his, like the um, I don't think prime, it was er- prime Roberts. It wasn't early. It was. Yeah. It, no. it was prime. Yeah, because uh-huh. it was he did. Yeah. Um, he did Star Rose Eighty, Jones, like right before. Hope okay. Grand Village. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't Star movie 80. strange. Eric Roberts yet. So exactly. So, uh, think, okay. Yeah. This he he seems super action. young in this one too, right? Like yeah. you're saying, young. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he was brilliant. Yeah, wasn't he it. nominated for an Oscar? So was John. I was about to say, yeah. So that that's what we were watching. What was I, the big? But that was directed by was that a Russian director or Andrew something? Andrew Kostadevsky. Okay, yeah. So there was something well, the about the script was originally written for was originally written by Akira Kurosawa, who uh, wanted to make his first American film. This wow. film, uh. and it was going to star, I think, Henry Fonda and somebody. Mm. You know, so um, it would have been an extremely different film. It probably would have been very interesting, but I don't think it would have had um, the kind of edge that the um, that this version had. Well, it's funny because John Voight went like he his acting in this one was over the top as well. Like he went he went for it. He went to 11. Yeah. And yeah. And, and, and he's lately and, and through his career, he's done that a bunch of times where he plays a completely, you know, he and, does and, a Pacino. And now. in that yeah. film, in that film, he beefed himself up. He had yeah. padding in there to make him look fat. Where actually he was 108. What was his well, name? he said he was a bean pole. Yeah. Eric Roberts has a commentary on the Blu ray. He was as skinny he as said he, Eric. So he said that um, Void just wore a fat, you know, wore a uh, muscle suit under his clothes. So really? Shoot. Bigger. You know, and he went for some extreme makeup too in the film as yeah. well. I mean, he really yeah. looked scarred and ugly. Right. You know, so, but this has been one of my, one of my favorite films of the 80s. Probably the only good film Canon made. You know, uh, that's not true. That's, that's not that's, true. What else was it? I don't know. There's one of Life Hercules. Hercules. They made Hercules. Hercules. With Lou Ferrigno. I think Cannon awesome. made Life Force, didn't they? 
You ever see that? <laughs> Life Force. <laughs> Classic. That's Matilda something. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. So, Matilda May. Was that her so name? So is that both of you, Debbie? That's uh that's the pick. Yeah. Runaway yeah, Trains. All right. I do. I uh like I talked to John last week in our show. Uh I haven't been streaming a lot and um because I'm busy with the movies and other stuff. But last night I went on Netflix and you talk about behind the scenes. I started watching, I think it's a second season for movies that made us. Yeah. 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 Excellent show. It, it is. And it is. I, it, there's something a little too frenetic about the way they cut that thing, you know, and I know they're using all the clips from film. So they say when Steven Spielberg got a call, they show someone in a movie picking up a phone. Anyway, I do love the behind the scenes <clears throat> stuff. And they, I watched Back to the Future and Jurassic Park last night. Yeah. Hmm. the behind the scenes and the whole Eric Stoltz, they really get into the whole Eric Stoltz uh, situation where they traded him out um, and they, yeah. and there's actually one shot in the film yeah. that is still Eric Stoltz. And it's yeah. when he punches Biff in the uh, supposedly in the diner, that's still Eric Stoltz based on eye lines and stuff like that. But what it did is that I'm, I shut those off and then I go watch Jurassic park and I watched Jurassic park three, which is the third Ugh. one that everybody hates that I love. Not, I, don't I love hate. that film. Second one sucked. <laughs> And I'm, I'm referencing this because Taylor Nichols has a small part in Jurassic Park 3, and he's in the film that Chris is about to bring to the table. So take it away, Chris. Wow. What's the film that you brought? Um, the film I brought is uh, Whit Stillman's 1994 uh, second entry, his sophomore entry called Barcelona. Um, Whit Stillman is a uh, director and writer, producer who... Uh, has made only five films, technically six. He actually, his sixth one is one of those, I think maybe you might remember a few years ago, Amazon did like a, you pick the pilot thing where they made a few movies and TV shows and allowed people to vote on them. Uh, his is one that didn't get picked. It was about, surprise, surprise, expats living in Paris. Um, oh, wow. So this movie is essentially, I actually saw this film in the theater in Salisbury, Maryland of all places, which is kind of uh odd considering Salisbury is hardly a, a mecca for independent film uh, but this was his second film uh, the first film that Stillman made was in 1990 a movie called Metropolitan which was actually uh, a pretty a decent um, independent hit it was actually nominated for best original screenplay uh, I actually think uh, this is his best movie I think it's his most accessible film uh, he made an, another movie later in the 90s called The Last Days of Disco in 98 um, <laughs> uh, yeah, which yeah, is it's it's fantastic. <laughs> and uh, The uh, Last Days of Disco is, um, let's put it this way, it's, it's his whole vibe, but it's about, uh, it's basically it takes place in the very, uh, in 1980, um, in the very last days of disco. And it's, uh, it's, it's basically, a, yeah, yeah. yeah exactly. it's funny. It's, it, it, it sounds like, it sounds like, and you read about, uh, you read about him and you realize he spent a lot of time in Studio 54. So you think that movie is going to be about all that, and it's not. It's a whole different thing. But anyway, let me let me show the trailer for this one, sure. um, uh, mainly because it shows it's got some of the greatest lines from the film. I just think are fantastic. Yeah. Well, what exactly are you doing here? I'm sort of an advance man for the Sixth Fleet. That's going to be really tough. It's an assignment that will require a lot of diplomacy and tact. I'm really surprised he gave it to you. You can't say Americans are not more violent than other people. No. All those people killed in shootings in America? Oh, shootings. Yes, but that doesn't mean Americans are more violent than other people. We're just better shots. I think it's true that the height of the sexual revolution is over. I don't go to bed with just anyone anymore. I have to be attracted to them sexually. But I always thought that women had to have some kind of profound emotional bond with a man before they became interested in a relation of that kind. Oh, no. I think anti-Americanism is really all that significant a phenomenon. It's certainly nothing to take personally. But you seem very intelligent for an American. Well, I'm not. Have you ever heard of the Marquis de Sade? Ted's a great admirer of de Sade. You see that odd expression on his face? Under the apparently very normal clothes he's wearing are these narrow leather straps drawn taut so that when he dances... What? He's a complex and in some ways dangerous man. Just once I'd like to go out with a girl not convinced I'm encased in black leather underwear. That bothers you? Mm -hmm. 
Take it away. Uh, all right. So um, one of the things I think is great about this film is, like I said, interestingly enough, just a little background, um, Stillman originally wanted to make this his first film, uh, but knew he didn't have enough money uh, to make the film um, on location in Barcelona. So he made Metropolitan, uh, which came out in 1990, which is basically all interiors, if you, any of you have ever seen that film. Um, it That movie is about uh, essentially the lives of... of very wealthy Manhattanites. Um, not all of them. One of them is an outsider, Tom Townsend. He's uh, he's specifically not wealthy. He's specifically not wealthy at all. Um, anyway, so he makes this movie. It does well. So he's able to make the second film. Uh, part of this movie is actually somewhat autobiographical. Um, Stillman himself was working and living in um, in Barcelona as a part working for a film distributing company. And that's where he actually met his Spanish wife. I don't know if they're still together or not, but he did. And a funny little story there about life imitating art, imitating life. Um, Taylor Nichols, the uh, guy who plays uh, Ted, he actually met his wife who's on the set of this film. So he ended up marrying, uh, he was the actor playing a guy who, meets his wife and things, ends up actually meeting and uh, marrying a Spanish woman. Um, what I think is so great about this film, and funny enough, all three of those films that I mentioned, they are actually all take place in the same universe um, in the sense that characters from each of the films show up in some of the other films, even though some actors are in multiple films playing different people. Let's put it that way. Like, for example, Taylor Nichols shows up just briefly um, in the last days of disco as the same guy. He mentions that he's in Barcelona, you know, working for a company. Anyway, so what I liked about this film um, is A, the dialogue. I, I really like the idea that, um, you know, um, Whitman uh, went to Harvard. He's obviously very intelligent, but I really like the kind of element that they speak in full sentences, that they're conveying like these full ideas when they talk. And they're, they're really complex ideas. Um, and I like the characters themselves. I thought one of the great things is, is Ted, who the actor Taylor Nichols uh, does have a bit of a stammer in real life. And just like that, stammer uh -oh. in real life. Well, I don't think you should have brought up his stammer because obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, right, well, interesting well, there. Well, well, while he's uh, figuring that out, oh, did, did you guys, Eddie, what's, what'd you guys think of the film? Oh my well, gosh. We love that film. That yeah. film was like top notch dialogue between the two cousins. And it was so Sorry funny. That, it's all right. It's a stammer. You had a bit of a stammer there. You're back. So Sorry. we were about to get everybody's opinion of the film, but keep going. Yeah, no, I just, uh, so I just wanted to say one of the things I think is great about it is the idea that I think it really kind of connects the uh, uh, people in other countries. Like it showed their, the way that they were, kind of somewhat emotionally isolated from folks because it is a different culture, but at the same time enamored with it. I love the scene where the two of them are walking and they look down on the women kind of learning their traditional dances and they're just so completely uh, mystified, but yet attracted to it. I mean, the women in it are obviously beautiful. Um, not Except he says he doesn't want to date beautiful women anymore. That's how the yeah, but that lasted fun. about yeah. 15 minutes. I know. I exactly. know. I mean, come on. Yeah. And Mira yeah. Servino's in this one as well. Mm -hmm. She's probably the, was the most Was this one of her first movies? She yeah. looked really young in this one. Yeah. Yeah. This was um, one of her first bigger films. Yeah. yeah. So uh, anyway, yeah. so that's that's kind of a little bit of the history there. Uh, but this movie did kind of semi-release wide. Like I said, I saw it in Salisbury. Um, I remember the girl I saw it with. She said to me specifically, I thought it could have been funnier. I thought it was hysterical. I can't get over how like funny this film is. And at it first, it's hilarious. It, it, when I first started to walk, because I, I loved Last Days of Disco. And after seeing this, I remember I had seen Metropolitan. And when I watched this one, I'm like, okay, it's starting a little Taylor, the Taylor Nichols, the, the shtick they were doing it. His shtick was, I wasn't quite sure where it was going. And then I just, then I just went with it. And once I saw his, his cousin come in, uh, it, it was just so much fun. You know yeah. what? It's always funny when brothers or cousins are talking real to each other. That mm -hmm. makes for great comedy, Ralph. And yeah, well, well, yeah, it's that whole, you know, like the, the story we tell about throwing a dart at him is a riot, right? When I throw the dart at John, it's so funny. I didn't think that was funny, yeah. but and yeah. that's what I mean. And him getting his kayak stolen wasn't funny, but, you know, no. it worked out. So, yeah, that really paid off. Um, too, yeah. it, but definitely the director has a style here that's a little bit. You, you gotta you gotta Definitely dive you have to accept it or you're gonna hate the film i think or not yeah. appreciate the film maybe you got to accept uh, the i'm a big i'm a big lover of Whit stillman 
I, I remember, here's how obscure Metropolitan was. I saw it, it was playing at the Baltimore Museum of Art. Oh my it was like God. a benefit. <laughs> it's the only place it was playing in Baltimore. And a friend of mine had a ticket. He goes, do you want to see this? And I go, what's it about? He said, well, it's about these debutantes and debutante parties in New York. I'm like, why would I want to see that? But what I loved about the film was that this is a culture I cared nothing about. Right. But the characters mm -hmm. were so engaging, particularly the guy who plays Fred in this movie, who was yes, in Metropolitan. Yes, the cousin, yes. Well. They were so engaging. And the, all these young performers, it was most of their first movie, that I just fell in love with the characters and I loved Whitman's um, script. I was not surprised by its nom nomination for an Oscar. And I was actually disappointed when it lost out to um, Goodfellas for best original screenplay, mm. you know, cause I think this was in some ways, uh, Metropolitan was a better script. I saw Barcelona at the art house here at the Charles. I loved Barcelona. I didn't like it quite as much as, as Metropolitan, but I did, and I'm going to be go out on the limb. I did not like last days of disco as much, even though it had mm. that um, same girl from Metropolitan who I thought was so cute. You know, Roger, who played the character Roger, who was mm -hmm. the same character in um, yep. Last Days of Disco. And then he made the, um, I believe next he did the, um, the Jane Austen film. Actually, his next film was a little movie called Damsels in Distress. Damsels he actually in went. Distress, which is, is also a very fun movie about these mm -hmm. girls in college and one whose main ambition is to create a dance craze. Dance yeah. is very important in all of his films. Metropolitan, it was always like the cha-cha. They were mm -hmm. dancing a lot in this. Last Days of Disco, there's obviously dancing. And um, Damsels in Distress, I couldn't remember which one was first. You know, yeah, Damsels he actually, in Distress is the only one of his movies I did not see in a theater. You know, yeah, that and one I is, loved when he did the Charleston. When he was doing that dance. Dancing to mm. Oh, reading the Bible. Gosh, no, when he was reading yes, the Bible. And he was holding yeah, the Bible. Yeah. yeah. Um, Charleston, that is like uh, my grandmother, uh, my great grandmother. Well, I, I also read that he was, when he's filming the disco scenes in this film in Barcelona, which were fun, I love those disco scenes. That's where he came up with the idea for the last days of disco, too, that that kind of, he loved shooting that stuff. And yeah. um, I just, I, I want to hear other people. Well, uh, John, John, you're up there with a <laughs> grimace on your face. A grimace? Yeah, a little bit. What no, no. Oh, no. Um, I loved, uh, let me see, how can I describe this movie? <laughs> so, so, um, it, it's not my cup of tea and Whoa. I didn't, I didn't love it. I didn't not like it. I, I, I told Ralph I'm indifferent to it for a couple of reasons. First of all, I loved seeing Barcelona, right? Cause it's something mm -hmm. I really haven't seen. I thought that was beautiful. I thought, uh, you know, it had an anti-Americanism vibe, but they didn't hit you over the head with it. Like it wasn't a vicious type of thing, because at the end, when she eats the hamburger and she says this is wonderful, it kind of took that all away. But my problem with this movie, I like the dialogue. I thought there were moments that were funny. I would never use the word hilarious to describe this movie. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought the acting, uh, I really thought the acting the line readings were pretty one note for almost mm -hmm. all of them. In fact, when Thomas Gibson showed up and did his one scene, mm -hmm. it was a completely <laughs> different energy than everybody else. And, yep. and that really struck me. Even the one guy, he had the one scene, the boss, he had two scenes yeah. and he made a couple of jokes. Th there was just a different vibe in their <laughs> acting styles. Like the, the lead who I like now he was like talking like no matter what the emotion was, he was talking like this the entire time. Well, and that whole thing with him. Don't you think him. that was the character? I, yeah, I, I think don't. That was, I yeah, don't that think it was. That was an affect. But you can have that yeah. affect. But there were certain points where there should have been a high, there should have been a low, and there just wasn't. Even I when think, his well, friend his got shot. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, this I, is my I, opinion. I understand. Sure. I understand. And so, I'm so, 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 so it it went like that for a long time. And again, there were things in it that I I, I did like, but it was very jumpy. There was no no payoffs on some of the scenes. The whole wedding mm -hmm. scene where she never showed up, there was no payoff to that. Him getting, uh, you know, you got this cute little movie where uh, they're talking, uh, you know, they think he's at the AFL-CIA. That was pretty funny. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, a guy pulls up and shoots him in the eye, which was like out of yeah. left field. I'm going, what the hell movie am I watching? 
And then he's in the hospital with one tube up his nose. He just got <laughs> shot through the eyes. Got one tube up his oh, nose. Oh, so now and reality then, and films matter. No, 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 no. But all but I'm Marvel, saying, you're gonna, oh my you're god, gonna, you're gonna do something like that. Oh, but but so you for, can. Yeah. No. Okay. And, and it, for me, it it didn't pay off. There were things mm-hmm. about it I liked, but but again, I wouldn't search this movie out, and I have no desire to see. Uh, his two other movies that you oh, guys. Oh, wow. Playing. That's oh, too yeah. bad. That's too, yeah, bad. Debbie. too bad. Can I just I say think we saw there. Metropolitan, didn't we? I did, too. I saw that yeah. and I didn't like that either. Yeah. The best well, I can tell you- of this movie is the cousins were so much so closer. They were closer than brothers. They were almost like yes. two people. And the, uh, the whole thing that we got out of this is to see how a family member twice removed or, you know, cousins, not brothers, but cousins are so competitive you know and even more so than brothers possibly i i get i mean i could see that a little bit but were they really competitive i mean were they because one was kind of a a liar and a cheat and a thief jugular all the time and the other guy was getting ripped off left and right and didn't seem to care in a you know, way. Oh, they care. <laughs> they went to the drug yeah. den and she was banging somebody else and he walks in and that just kind of, oh, oh, yeah, I did something that's... awful and I stole money. <laughs> I needed it, though. I'm like, what? What the <laughs> well, hell? That was the whole, that's yeah. the whole, to me, the whole thing was that, that, that these, the cultures are completely different. What we take is important. They just like the whole sex totally, thing yeah. and, the, and the money thing. It's a completely different. And, and yeah. the analogy of the ants, the use of the ants yeah. in this film. Yeah. And the end, the end thing about the, his boss, you're talking about yeah. what people know about America. America's in an ant box and everybody likes to look at the ant box and we're the ants and they don't like ants. <laughs> people don't like <laughs> well, ants. Right. And, and, you know, and it's how the different cultures, even dating and all that stuff that, um, you know, was throughout the film. And I think the affect, like when his brothers, when his cousin was in the hospital and his line, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. Right. He's, he's going to make a complete recovery, a complete right. recovery. Mm-hmm. It's just like his like he felt guilty that he could shot because he kicked them out. And mm-hmm. he was just, you know, just trying. Oh, yeah, to I, I got that. I got and the it. Whole, I just, the whole yeah. positive thinking. Thing. I just didn't yeah. see it. Right. The whole positive the- thinking thing. Right. And I'm I, gonna throw this. Yeah, because he read all the books. Right. All when I first when books. I first started watching this, I got a total swingers vibe. I got the vibe swingers? of swingers. Yes. Wow. Vince Vaughn playing the crazy out out outside the norm mm-hmm. guy trying to get this other guy to forget his I girlfriend. Did not get and get that a new girlfriend. I didn't either. Um, this <laughs> yeah. is my opinion. Uh, and tell so I just felt like well, and then, obviously and, that opinion sucked because you just froze. <laughs> <laughs> Am I frozen? You just You're did. Back. Oh, I'm back. He's um, back. <laughs> I just meant, you know, the young, and, and, and it turns He's out they, now. it turns out they both taught each other stuff. Both of them. I, I thought their relationship was both like like Debbie saying it's deep, deep, deep family relationship where you can say anything you want to that person. And ultimately, at the end, you're going to be there. And that's what happened. They're all together. And as far as Thomas mm-hmm. Gibson, uh, uh, Kubrick saw him in this film, loved the sound of his voice yeah. and put him in eyes wide shut. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that may be because everybody else was so affected and just trying to. Another, actually, a kind of a side note for the Thomas Gibson section as well. I read an interview with him uh, talking about this movie, and he said that he had part of the reason there's a different energy there, John, is he was like, he was really worried about getting, he was like, I don't have many lines, and he didn't want any of them cut. So he literally went in there and said them all as fast as he could, basically. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? That, uh, yeah. He said that. Well, because he, he that. definitely had a different energy than everybody, <laughs> including yeah. the cousin. But I'm going to say this about, you know, you mentioned the um, him getting shot um, and how it kind of comes out of left field. And, and I'm not sure it does. I mean, the movie opens up with the bombing of the library, the bombing of the USO. He sees himself as uh, on the front page of a, a newspaper when that guy Ramon writes a, uh, an incorrect story about him and the guy throws his money away. I think it was there. And I think it's kind of the idea that there was a major thing happening like this undercurrent was going on but they were kind of maybe too involved with their own little lives to to notice it you know well, he said he thing, thought he was getting followed he was like i get getting, that but well, i thought he was gonna showing get, people giving them dirty looks because of the uniform that's right so but i thought he'd get beat up or something i wasn't off. expecting that but James then of course on. after he gets shot and he's recovering he walks out he, he wears the uniform, uniform. Yeah. You an idiot just take the uniform well, off. it could have shot him in his good eye that's because <laughs> we're we're stupid America. I mean, he says it. He goes, "All Americans are smart, not me, or whatever." I mean, we, yeah, it's just you're, it's it's like they they were com- they were completely naive about okay. what was going on. Go ahead. Well, but there is the he does make. I'm sorry, you you go. No, go ahead. 
I was just going to say, but he does make that great line when he, when he runs out of the, the, the restaurant, you know, and he's, and he's talking to Taylor Nichols and he's like, and you know, he's like, what are you doing? He's like, yeah, well, you know, I got up and I realized I was kind of acting an idiot, but he's like, you know what? He, he talks about, you know, he's like, he obviously was working for like a, a big financial institution. And he was like, you know, there was no disrespect. He's like, you know, being an officer in the Navy is one of the few white collar jobs that demand that you do it. And then he's like, and then there's all the fighting for freedom and city on the hill stuff, which as you know, I believe. And he's like, that's right. You do. And I will say this, John, and I'm just throwing this out here as, as a, uh, you know, they obviously come from that. I'm not upper class at all. My parents were teachers, but like coming from that Protestant um, history, I guess you could say there is that kind of, emotional reservedness um i am a presbyterian you know and he even makes that comment he's like this is the presbyterianism or something like when he's doing that weird dance and um there's that moment where he's like i don't know there is a reservedness there yeah uh, in emotion even with one's uh family you know um that uh is kind I mean, of all a, the films have that hallmark yeah you know? all his films have that reserved you know mm -hmm. Sure. Eracristic. Did you buy for one right second word? that he loved that first girl? Did you buy that for one second that he, he loved on his across to me is very stilted. Like his dialogue, the way he was talking, it was very much like this. Like he didn't really have, you know what I mean? It was just, it didn't mm -hmm. feel like it flowed to me. It was very but uncomfortable. Man, this, this is one of those times where I feel like I've been sucked into a portal <laughs> where <Jesus> everybody <laughs> else <laughs> likes the movie, <laughs> but me. And okay. we watched we watch Barcelona a long time ago. We had a friend who was into all the Stillman flicks, and she had to lend us her VHS tapes, and we watched Metropolitan, and we watched Barcelona. So that tells you how long ago it was. And we watched um, Last Days of Disco. And as much as you like this, Chris, and for all the reasons you like it, is why I can't <laughs> stand these movies. And, uh, you know, when I'm hearing all of you liking it, uh, once again, I'm in this position where I'm thinking, what the hell am I missing? We thought they were a bunch of pretentious assholes. I can't believe, you know, when they were doing the, the long um, dialogue, I said, you know, we we had a lot of intelligent friends in college, but we never talked like that. Let's talk and blah, 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 blah. And let's do this soliloquy and let's do that and blah, blah, blah. Well, then they dedicated and a I whole scene to which way am I supposed to shave? Hey, no, hey, 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 oh my hey, god hey, and it had a beautiful payoff that scene had a beautiful payoff oh my what was the beautiful god. payoff when his boss it says over. yeah well you're shaving the wrong way yeah. i've been saying that for years <laughs> you know what that has really stuck with me all the shaving I'm shaving i really think about that scene well of that actor that scene. actor chris i i i don't know how to say his name I I mean, he's in all I three of them. He's in he's in all three. He's and great. I don't I know if I've seen him. And John, John wasn't in all the three. Same ass okay, in okay. All three. Drew, Drew, you got to jump in. You're so quiet. Say but something. Ro Rojo, this is why we need try to, to say something. <laughs> well, I remember I saw these the three movies, the Stillman movies uh, in college. I had forgotten because um, I only one I watched again now was Barcelona. I had forgotten what you mentioned, Chris, that there is actually a Stillman cinematic universe, which I I like when an, a, a director makes movies that you know are a, a world that you recognize that sort of thing. But um, unless you hate that world, in case, and then in that case, <laughs> it's totally just reasonable. continuous hell. Oh over my God! I thought I had left this again. world. Why am I when there? I when I when you when I found out that the the choice was Barcelona, <laughs> nice Debbie. When I found out that the choice was Barcelona, I, I won't I'm not going to pretend that I was super excited because mm -hmm. I don't remember. I didn't hate it or anything, but I remember thinking of it as, oh, this is Woody Allen for Gentiles. And <laughs> that's it's not really that's a criticism. A no, it's just yeah, that's, that's a, what it is. That's a good poster. That's, that actually is right. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's, he's been he's been compared. Uh, he's been called the wasp Woody Allen before. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, I, don't think think that, I think that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, that makes perfect that makes sense. sense. <laughs> and it's funny because John Favreau, you know, in writing Swingers, I, I see the connection that, that Ralph is saying. I don't I mean, the, the Vince Vaughn character is more flamboyant, but there's something about um, <laughs> about the. Um, the the little world that it creates the the funny part is i had forgotten just how political the movie really is yeah i mean i had, I had forgotten, forgotten that it's i hate this movie i, I had forgotten <laughs> that it's um 
Yeah. But it's a it's a period film. You know, it mm-hmm. came out in the '90s. It's set in the '80s. I, I I thought it was interesting that um, you know, if you think about Europe in the in the '70s and the '80s politically, there's such incredible turmoil. I mean, Spain. You know, Franco died in 1975. Fascism ended, and the whole the whole uh, face of Europe is changing. They don't know it, of course, at the time in the movie, but the Cold War is going to end soon, all that kind of stuff. And I liked, I didn't, I'm not going to pretend I really super enjoyed watching the movie, but I liked how it portrayed that the Americans were essentially oblivious to all of that that was happening until they got shot in the face. Right. Because I thought that, that was feels, kind of accurate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, feels, that feels very realistic. And <clears throat> I'm also not going to pretend that current events aren't, aren't uh, coloring my reaction to a movie about Americans uh, in foreign lands. And uh, I mean, I saw a picture today that showed uh, a CH 47 Chinook helicopter hovering over the embassy in Saigon in 1975, and then the same helicopter hovering over the embassy in Kabul this week. And yeah. so, you know, this same does model, fit in, not the same one, right? Not the same one. Well, it could be the same one, you know, <laughs> you, 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 know you fix stuff, but I mean that, that, that it exists, <laughs> that it exists in the same world as Graham green and uh, quiet American and, and other things where it, 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 there's a, it's weird because uh, I think some of the stuff that's written about that in movies that are about that, they criticize Americans for being that way. It doesn't mm-hmm. mean that every American is there to wreak havoc or to clomp around. Although these guys, do do that and then the movie basically says but you know that's cool burgers <laughs> and you know, I, I don't i don't think that makes it a bad movie or anything but the the violence it's the way that the violence touches the americans does feel very realistic i mean he's he's worried about being followed but he still wears the uniform because he's proud of it and he doesn't really know what's going on and the the console is an asshole, but you know, he's not really an asshole. He's actually a guy that knows what's going on in the city. Mm-hmm. And, you know, they, they set up um, what's uh Tushka Bergen is the, the, the blonde actress. I, I'm sorry. I can't remember the character's name. Montserrat. Uh, Montserrat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So she's with Ramon and they're both the other people and all this other stuff. And the, you know, the Americans don't know what to do with that. Uh, there's there's a lot of just real conservative stuff going on in the movies that it's very mm-hmm. light, but it it feels um, well I, it, it feels weird because to me like the, the, what you, I, I can't remember who said it but somebody said something about it. it's it's a world that you don't care about and then you get in the world and you learn about it and it kind of gets your attention I think it was what Sean said yeah mm-hmm. and that, that was my experience so I understand <laughs> that was that was my experience with Friday Night Lights the TV show I don't give mm-hmm. a shit about texas and football and evangelical christians and high school kids and i love that because it yeah i love that too. the characters and all the stuff this movie didn't do that this movie didn't connect with me on that level so um i mean Whit stillman is is uh is a much better human being than woody allen and his movies i think serve a similar purpose in terms of highlighting a bourgeois type of part of society mm-hmm. so but the, the the thing i i really felt about the movie was you know how when you go to the Charles Theater or another art house and you watch mm-hmm. a movie that's it's a funny art film and everybody goes, <laughs> that's this movie. <laughs> that's, that's, not, you know that's, what? Not, that's not really that's not really a criticism. So I mean, the, the writing there's some funny stuff and everything, but it's it's not it's not funny. It's not like it didn't. I, didn't I guess I'm, I guess I'm just because I laughed out loud. It's some I of the lines out loud. and uh-huh. some of the scenes that, that scene they do in the car where, where Fred breaks down the graduate about oh, yeah. house and yeah. you didn't see the graduate and you know explains what the real meaning behind the graduate was i just felt there were laugh out loud scenes baked in you know a conservative reserved kind of setting that they're doing but laugh out loud lines and stuff and just even when fred wakes up from his coma and we realize before the character uh, ted realizes that he's awake and aware of what's going on i i just i don't know i don't know why this isn't funnier to people like, well, Joe, I can't, I don't know why you hate it so much. Well, I didn't find it laugh out loud, funny Ralph, but I will say it was funnier than a hospital. (laughs) (laughs) You know, it's, you know, because it had some humor. I I don't even know how to react to that one, but uh, (laughs) with you, you're like going fire tonight. Well, it's his last, he's going out with a bang, (laughs) going out with a bang. He's burning, burning the bridges. What you're doing, you're burning the bridges. I'm just saying, you better watch out. 
Okay, um, we've been doing that all along. I, I found it laugh out loud funny. And and like the, the last days of disco and Metropolitan to me weren't that. It was a little more, I mean, like you're saying, I'm in a world that I would never be in and fascinated. It's, it's like, I feel like, the, you know, when they're saying you're looking at ants, that's how I feel looking at these people. I'm looking at something that I could never, I would never be participating in, except this one. And I don't know if it had to do with his his dating principles and what he was trying to do and just the mm-hmm. relationship those two had, which ultimately they're together at the end. The way they feel about foreign women, he goes, well, you know, if you date a foreign woman, it doesn't matter. They they have all their preconceived things, but you don't have to feel insulted. You just be who you are. They're going to think you're a pig anyway, right? I mean, it's <laughs> like it's kind of a freeing film. I don't know. Loved it. I never looked. I never looked at it that way. Maybe I should have traveled. Well, I like to look at the ants. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, and then we look at ourselves when we see a film like this because it's really looking at us through the eyes of the culture that you're in, the new one. And you know, it's so interesting to see the the cousins, how they, they're reacting in a strange new land. You know, it's just like the world was different from the United States, totally with their sexual freedom. And that that was really fun to watch. You know, they how they behave, their behavior, and towards each other. Hilarious yeah. because they were competitive so much so that they switched their girlfriends, right? Yeah, well, they, well, they both friends? end up they both like end up Ralph, going after this. That, but you go like this somehow. Want to do well, what? They didn't switch like them. That... No, you go like this. You go like this. I don't know what that's called. Don't. No. <laughs> Put that down. No. No. <laughs> what? All right. I think I think the Bro. movie is wrapped up. I think it's uh, there's a line that Fred does where he's talking <laughs> to Ted about when he reads articles and he reads newspapers. <laughs> he goes, there's this whole thing that oh. su- sub they call it subtext. And I know I'm not getting the meaning. And he says to Ted, what's the stuff that's above the subtext? And he goes, that's text, text, right? And to me, that's what's about this movie. We're we're trying to like all this subtext. But he didn't go, he didn't go the text. He went. The, the text. text. But that's yeah. Text. Well, because he's like, that's his affect. Uh, yeah, that's his affect. Yeah. That's yeah, so absolutely. Hilarious. Yeah. But he's a he's a he's a reserved guy. One of the lines. He's very reserved. Love. Very reserved, Chris. <laughs> very yes. reserved. And one of the things just to, to, to bring back to one of your first comments, John, where you're talking about how there seems to be this kind of anti-Americanism. And, and there was a lot of anti-Americanism in Spain and other places like that. But I, I love the line where he's. Um, the Chris Eigenman, the, the Fred character is talking to the Mira Sorvino. And he's like, when, cause when she tells him eventually, like in the beginning, she, he tells him the, she learned to speak English in Providence, Rhode Island. Yeah. And he looks at her and he just goes, when you were in Providence, was the violence and racism really that bad? <laughs> and, you know, and she has nothing to say to it because you're right. There is this constant kind of overdone thing, especially when they bring in the, uh, the reporter Ramon who, yeah. Yeah. Um, and he's talking about, you know, the main being blown up and it's a historical fact and all this kind of stuff. And, and I mean, the truth is, is the main probably just had a boiler accident. Now, granted the yellow journalism, William Randolph Hearst, and they used that and they turned it into a war, but, um, but I even like the Ramon character. Cause at the very end, you know, you know, you, you think that there's going to be some kind of like confrontation or right. whatever, and he just makes it a, a truly sincere and heartfelt and, apology, basically. And it's saying, how he ended up with his girlfriend, too. He goes, I need you to do me a favor. Yeah. And, and exactly. Yeah. He's like, there is something you can do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they, yeah, I, just, I actually I, like the fact that there was no wedding. And then they cut to them at the lake, you know? And then, yeah, but but the fact that the fact that they made a big point of the whole family was late for the wedding. Yes. I think and then they never say, paid it off. But again, it's culture. I think that's just uh, part of the culture. Um, it's right. It's the reserved nature of the culture. I'm just saying that no, I think that's know, more a comment on, on Spanish culture. Right. That's Americans my point. Could be punctual yeah. and would have been nice to see the wedding, though. I'm just saying. Uh, I <laughs> well, see. It's, 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 it's funny. It's funny. What, what the girl was the, beautiful. The right. woman funny, you don't know. Beautiful. You don't know who he's going to marry. There's an element of mystery. to No, he marries the one that was praying at the bed. Yeah. The reading at the bed. The woman praying. She was very. She was beautiful. That woman was beautiful. Anyway, I I liked it so much. I went and bought the laser disc. Well, how could you not? It was I spent, laugh out loud. Riot. I spent three ninety five. <laughs> I mean, it was like watching I, airplane. I laughed out loud from this. No, film. I know. I get it. I totally the graduate. Get it. like, the graduate line when he's banging his thing against the window. Oh, in my the, God. In the car. Yeah. I busted a gut. Yeah. Well, you know what? You need to get out. More, okay. <laughs> well, you stole was... my kayak. That's why I shot you at the door. <laughs> you threw a dart at me. <laughs> 
Anyway, you almost I, punctured my lung. Anyway, good choice. I thought a good choice. Um, well, you know. well, I always like say, listen, I, I, I mean, I didn't I didn't hate it as much as Brojo hated it. Uh, well, I probably didn't, didn't hate it as much it. as she I like, I like, uh, you know, wow. when you guys was, bring me right, movies so that I wouldn't go out and see. No, no, no. I, listen, I don't, you know, I had my issues with it, but uh, I like sometimes when you bring movies that I would never think of watching. Right, you know what I mean? T- I do like that. It we doesn't mean about- I'm going to like it. It doesn't mean it's going to make me go out and see the next no. one. But I, I, you know, there were yeah. things in it that I did like. Yeah. I didn't. I don't think we talk about like this all the time on this pod, and we just talked about it earlier offline. Like, yeah, you know, when Chris was thinking about this movie, he said, "Well, I was thinking about bringing X, whatever that other film was, Blade Runner, Blade Runner." Ugh. And you know, it's Ugh. it's, and partly I wanted to do this to <laughs> the whole genesis of this was to bring films to people that they would have never seen. Right. Right. That's why. Uh, and. and and that's why I don't want to do Jaws. That's why I don't want to do Die Hard. You know, the classics yeah. that you everybody like a, does. Suck a proxy. <laughs> um, we did that because you brought that and it's fine. We, you know, I had never watched it. So I watched it, hated it, but whatever. That was right. laugh out loud. Most, pe- most people what, do. When you search it on YouTube, the, the things that you guys have done that have been really gotten a lot, it's always a specific film. You know, it's like because somebody's mm. looking for, you know, because like three people are going to look for Barcelona. And uh, <laughs> so we'll get it. We'll get a couple of extra views out of it that way. But uh, yeah, I noticed that. Yeah, but if they look up it. laugh out loud comedy, it'll bring them right to it. <laughs> yeah. we'll, get in a hat. we'll find that in the hospital. <laughs> you know, I can't take I can't. It's someone who looks at Marvel movies with the reverence you look at this shit to sit there and complain about realism in a film just blows my mind. And to sit there and say, I'm laughing out loud because I find something amusing. It, it just boggles. It's just, you, 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 you just got to, I can't even speak right now. I don't are even know what to say. Us, so, or are you mad at no, us? Mad so if I ask a hundred people, at him, you not you? this no, film no. Barcelona as a laugh out loud film? I said there were How parts many that made me laugh out loud. How many out of a hundred would say yeah, yes? But you know, the side of the box of um, Osage, or what was that? August Osage County yeah. said it was a rollicking, the best comedy of the year. And we watched it. Wasn't it a drama? And comedy. it wasn't a comedy. Wait a minute. It was horrible. Wait, just let me let me just tell you guys how I see this this film is very kind of if you get the joke I and the way it's up. intended, it's really deeply funny. Yes. You know, it's not it's, something you're gonna laugh out loud. I did though. That's what I mean. I, I, listen, I agree with you, I'm Debbie. I found it funny, but it only in a cerebral. Way. I did not find it laugh out loud funny. I thought it was. I mean, listen, funny. it's not. It's not blazing saddles. Laugh out loud. Funny. That's or laugh thing. out loud. Okay, funny. You know, no, blazing but saddles, and it doesn't hold up for laughing out loud, right? Well, you can't yeah. laugh out loud. Funny. <laughs> you can't laugh at some of that stuff. But I, I just, no, I, you I can, found, and people do. I found yes, the situation. Of they do, and but the thing is. Um, you don't want to show it in the backyard on 16 millimeter in my neighborhood. Exactly. Exactly. You don't want to do that in our neighborhood. Yeah. Yeah. That'd be a tough one. Our neighborhood here. That'd be a th- You're talking about Barcelona or uh, Blazing Saddles? <laughs> <Saturday? laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> but, you know, the purpose of that, when you connect with the film, when you hear the, their, their, uh, what they're saying, it's so fast. And your mind is like, you're laughing on your brain side because you're getting it. And you're connecting with what was intended, you know, it's just to be really gut. It's like a, a thing you're going through and a maze. And when you get there and you get connected, you can't wait for the next connection. You're listening all the time for that, you know, spark of intellect that you could follow. You know, that's what I love about this film. Yeah. And I would have never seen. So you, you have to be intelligent to like this film is what Debbie's saying. I think you do have to be watching very closely and listening. With oh, that should have been ears. said. But you can be intelligent and not like it. So there. Yeah, no. Uh, this is, is going in. This is going this in. This is an intelligent yeah. person's movie. I can edit this around. Movie. <laughs> oh, yeah. Absolutely. No, if, you, if your IQ is high, you're going to think this is a laugh riot. I, I, <laughs> well, I mean, I've always described this movie as, as clever. You know? Okay. okay. I, I agree with that. I mean, Chris? I always describe this movie as clever. I find it amusing. I find it funny. I find it clever. Um, I don't, there, there aren't gags in this film. You know, there's no dick and fart jokes, which don't get me wrong. I love a good dick and fart joke. Who doesn't? Yeah. It does. Yeah. I mean. Let me ask you this. Based on dick. that, was Back to the Future clever? Back, 
Back to the Future. In some ways, clever. it was really clever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, and it's like all out funny, wrong. right? Yeah. I'm just and, connecting but it's the also two. funny, yeah. I'm giving you're, you the subtext where there's text. Wait, That's you're comparing this movie to Back to the Future? No. I'm making a it's terrible joke. Okay. They're both shot on <laughs> film, John. They're both shot on film. They both were written and had actors and a director. And Crispin Glover definitely had an affect. So, yeah, definitely. No, I'm not going to lie. When I first started watching the film, it did. It was a little bit tonally. I'm like, what? I don't quite understand what they're doing. And then I just by the end of it, I'm completely <laughs> involved in what they're doing. I just yeah, thought it was great you drinking at the time. No. <laughs> and you <laughs> identified more with the cousin than uh, the I, lead, right? no, no. I think I identified with Ted, but I loved Fred. Yeah. Ted yeah. trying to find romance and figure out what he's yeah. doing wrong yeah. and all that stuff. And I just and, and that's why I said to me it was swingers because, you know, John John Favreau was trying to figure out the same thing. And he has this crazy mm -hmm. friend who's breaking through these stuff. And I think Fred brought a little bit out of this guy, Ted, in yeah. his own way. And it helped Ted Fred in the long helped run. Ted when and, they went and, to the bed. And they both, he got some hit. What? <laughs> All right, Doctor Deuce. <laughs> and All and right. and and Fred helped Ted, and Ted helped Fred. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, 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 and the, only, the other thing I didn't talk about. Seuss book. The only thing I didn't talk about was the whole marketing, <laughs> like the marketing thing. We kept talking about his boss, who's this. You know, he was a, he was a salesman. His whole sales. Yeah, the, his mentor. Right. His and mentor. Dickie, he Dickie, who he thinks he's going to fire him. Yeah. Um, and that reminded me right. of Jerry Maguire, you know, that whole thing where they kept flashing to the to his mentor right. that, right, you know, I don't know. I, I, you know what? I, I got to say one thing that really resonated with me. I was in the this cult, this self-improvement cult called Amway. Ugh. So I knew all those. <laughs> books. I knew all that language. So any time they'd say, oh, but did you read this one? Oh, I those mean, things. I was just laughing out yeah. loud because I was exactly there. You yeah, know, I thought that was a, well, stuff was hilarious. The funny thing I loved about this film was we have we have granddaughters that are twin. We call them twin cousins. They're both six year olds, and they're both Patty Duke. And they're like cousins. Cousins, identical so, cousins, oh identical gosh. twin cousins. <laughs> so competitive at six, you know, they're so competitive. Debbie, this competitive thing really hit you in this movie. Yeah, yeah. I love competition. Yeah, and I've heard like the girls go to each other. Mara, it's not a competition. And I said, oh, yes, it is. I think we're frozen. <laughs> oh, you guys no, are all still here. Yeah, you're still so. frozen. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah. sometimes I think I'm frozen. Anyway. I'm Presbyterian. Yeah. Baby. Baby. <laughs> all I know is my laser disc was sealed for three ninety five. dollars Still in the package. Nice. So was That's that the person who buys laser discs? It right? was not whatever the Spanish, whatever the uh, pesos. It was, only two bucks, it was only two bucks to rent it. Pesetas. Pesetas, right. Pesetas. Yeah. 100, you work at I need 100,000 pesetas because I'm a drug addict. <laughs> Isn't that One like 14 things I did like about the film, and it's something I i don't think I've ever actually seen it in another film, and you guys are probably about to yell three films that proved me wrong. Um, but one thing I did like, and I, I don't know, I did think that um, – one of the opening bits with Ted, uh, it's, it's, it's a part of his character that I felt was something you never see in film. Like he is, he's opening and he does that whole thing about dating homely, you know, women who are somewhat plain or homely because, you know, he, he looks back and he says, you know, I dated this girl, Betty, basically because she's pretty. And he felt guilty about the emotional pain that he caused her. And you don't see that a lot in film, you know, um, you know, he's like, you know, I dated her. We, you know, he's, you know. And he calls him a prig, you know, his, his cousin calls him a prig later. He's, I wasn't using that pejoratively. Um, but I, I love that element where he's like, you know, that idea that here's this guy that's like, I've done something bad to another person. I, I don't want to do it again. And I'm going to try to change my life. Now, granted, he even says later, well, of course, if the perfect girl for me is beautiful, I'm going to date her. And it, and you notice that he like, you know, he has these ideas, these somewhat, you know, old school ideas about, you know, I love that scene where he talks about, you know, a relationship of that kind and all both of the women and his cousin are like, oh, no, that's not correct at all. Well, the theory there was, I mean, he, they started saying that Extremis. like a beautiful woman, like it, mm. it causes you to do other, like you forget other. I yes. don't know. There's something mm -hmm. about forgetting other things and it's just beauty causes the pain and. And, right. and then and then that first scene. Now he meets. He ends up meeting a woman. He ends up marrying when they all come out of the car and the, and the not so good looking one comes straight at him. And he thinks that's the one he's going to date. Right. Right. 
And I think, I don't know if that's who he ended up with or he ended up with the other friend. No, he actually, it's funny enough, the woman that he, who's one of the women that are dressed up as the princesses, not the homely one, but the other one that's not Maria Sorvino. She's the one that actually ends up with uh, uh, Thomas Gibson at the film, at the end. He's like, what are weekends of fun? Why does she keep asking me about my underwear? Right, right. right. It's supposed to be a Spanish thing. I laughed out loud at that one. That's one. She ends up being just one of the women that helps him out. (laughs) I love that. You're easily amused, Ralph. (laughs) Um, Um, The most important thing, I want to go to Barcelona. Yeah, Yeah. Barcelona did look very attractive, other than the bombings, of course. I just don't want to see Fred or Ted. I would Uh, love to hang out (laughs) Barcelona. Oh, I think I'd love to hang out with Fred and Ted. Actually, I I think you'd be perfect with Fred and Ted. I think although your affect's very different from that. Yeah, you're you're an emotional roller coaster. (laughs) Too expressive. Yeah. Well, and you're not one who doesn't go for physical beauty. I mean, that's that's big on your scale there. Well, neither did those. That's guys true. But, so. but uh, yeah, that's no Fred. Absolutely. But the other guy, I don't want that physical stuff. Can I ask the thing. guys a question? <laughs> uh, yeah, go ahead. Sure. Go ahead. Ask the guys. And ladies, too. Do you. This is a real question. Against the grain or with the grain? Shaving. I do both. Uh, I, go, I, go, with, I go with the grain, with the grain and then, here against and then, the grain. And then, right. And we'll, yeah. Mm-hmm. I think I'm following that with and then against the grain under here because it's yeah. Now, work. if this doesn't get you subscribe, hit the notification <laughs> button and share <laughs> this kind of stuff. You against don't get this grain. from all review shows, okay? Against the grain, I pluck yeah. each individual hair. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> this is crazy, uh, Ralph. Yeah, hit that button, smash. <laughs> oh, 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 good oh, face. Oh, That's good. Oh, All right, good face. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, good, good job, Chris. Good for your first well, one. Brought to the table. Yeah. yeah uh, Wojo well, and Brad, to- we're we're gonna about to do the spin. You're off the spin. I'm sorry, but uh, oh, okay. you know, you have to go. Chris, you're All also right off now. the spin. Although you're gonna have to send me a picture for the next spin because we'll do. By another- the way, I think it's great that Chris and Drew are on the same show and everyone got along. I think that's great. So that's important. <laughs> uh, I have no idea what, what his that problem is. I, it's I have no it's idea. Ralph's relationship. I don't want to get into it. It's, you'll it's, understand. Uh, no <laughs> idea what his problem is. <laughs> I do. Jesus Christ. Which one is your cousin, Ralph? He's, He's, He's got to make a full recovery. He'll make a full recovery. A full recovery. He's got to make a full recovery. He'll make a. He'll, oh, I'm right. out. I'm what out. Happened? Oh, no, you're in. You're I in. I just you're got a call. Up. That's why. All right. If it's me, it's going to be Metropolitan. Oh, God. <laughs> It's true. Can we so do movie strange crossovers? <laughs> I'm not bringing dead girl to this show. Oh, no, sure. I wouldn't. I don't know if that would go over very well. All right. Well, there you go. Drew brings the next film to Yippie Kaye Classic. Well, we Joe and weeks. Brad, we hate to see you go. We understand why you uh, need a little sabbatical from this crew. Yeah. I don't blame you. Kind of. <laughs> uh, uh, if only I could leave, uh, but I can't. So. <laughs> I got to stay. But so, then who uh, would run everything, Ralph? That's right. That nobody. Do you know, Brad. Nobody. Oh, by the way, uh, I do. I do have here. a bit of. Okay, we'll talk about it after. Um, listen. Good luck with the drumming, Brad. Good luck with the jobs. Everybody have a good. Uh, good luck with the project, weeks. Brad. Good luck. Drew, with let the us project. know. Drew, let us know in a couple days. The film. I will let you guys know. I will All right. Let you know. But we got two weeks, right? Yep. Two yes, weeks. We do. Yep. But you know, get it to us. You know, within a little bit, so we can have some time to watch it. Mm-hmm. All right. I mean, that seems reasonable. Yeah, that's what I thought. <laughs> All, right. All right. Good job, oh, everybody. Sure, we're taking a break and you all become reasonable. Thanks. Yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> I was thinking I maybe know. we could we could all get together and, and do the limbo. That'd be fun. <laughs> Got to get super it's low. Too early. too early to dance. Yeah, it's too early to maybe, dance. Maybe it is too early. Maybe it is. <laughs> Come on. Great lines in that film. I, know. I, don't I mean, laugh out loud. Well, I, I guffawed. I actually guffawed. I am laughing out loud. I guffawed a couple of times. Hell All right. No, no. Everybody have a good couple of weeks. We'll see you uh, next time. <laughs> Brad. Brad taking a shot at Ralph. Wow. <laughs> I was not going for misogyny. I was going for indentured servant is what I was going for. You guys obviously get that. When Brad's taking shots at you, you know something's going on. Wow. It's been a long couple of weeks for me.